Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna talk about something I wish more people would talk about, and that is the histogram. This has to be one of the biggest game changers for me when it comes to improving the quality of my photos, which is why I have to make this the second video I put out. It has allowed me to edit a photo like this and turn it into this. And this is how. The histogram is a graph that reads your shadows, your midpoints, and your highlights. And it also lets you know whether you've lost information in your shadows or your highlights. The histogram has allowed me to retain enough information in my shadows and highlights. So when I go into Lightroom and Photoshop, I have more control and enough information to edit to my liking. So if you lose detail in your shadows, that will be a true black and you will no longer be able to bring that information back up. Whether you're using Lightroom or Photoshop, that information is now dead and if you lose detail on your highlights that will be a true white and the same rule will apply so to prevent this from happening you want to avoid peaking which means do not let your graph touch the left side of the border or the right side of the border once your graph has touched the left side of the border you have now lost information in your darkest shadows and once it's touched the right side of the border, you have now lost detail in your brightest highlights. Once you've taken a photo, the way to get to the histogram is to hit play and then click the information button twice. And then you'll see the histogram pop up. So I shoot in manual mode and when I'm shooting, the first thing I do is set my aperture and ISO up. Once I have that set, the only thing I move from now on is the shutter speed. So once I look into the viewfinder, I move my shutter speed around until it gets to the neutral part of the bracket and that's when I take my first test shot. Now I put the playback button and then go to the histogram to see if the histogram is well balanced and centered. If I see that it's too much to the left, then what I will do is slow down the shutter speed to push it a little bit more towards the right so I'm not losing that shadow information. So when I'm shooting, what I try to do is avoid touching either side of the border and that's when I feel confident enough to keep moving on and shooting. One thing I also want to talk about is the LCD screen behind your camera. The reason why I don't go off that lighting is because there's so many variables that can change that. For instance, when there's a lot of bright light coming in and you're trying to look at your screen, you might get a glare so you move it to the shade. And when you go to the shade, that lighting that's coming from the screen may not be as bright as somebody else's so it's not giving you the exact information. Alright guys, so let's go back and actually analyze this photo that I took with my friend Erica because it's such a good example for the histogram. So when I went to this shoot, I did forget to bring my flash so I had to work with the available light that was there and as you guys can see, it didn't look too good. When I took my shot, right away I checked my histogram to see if I actually retained enough information to work with back in post and as you guys can see, I did end up peeking on my highlights but I I knew that that was coming from the light bulbs in the background which I did not mind losing. Then when I looked at my histogram and saw that I was not peeking on my shadow side, I was happy because I knew that I can make something out of this photo back in post. Looking at the final photo, you guys can see that I did end up adding a blue gradient filter to the right and also added a pink overall tint just to make the photo more visually appealing. And I will be showing you guys the tools I used to make this happen. But first, I do not want you guys to think that you guys are taking bad photos because they're coming out dark. As long as you guys end up checking the histogram and see that you guys have retained enough information, I want you to know that your photos may have more potential than you actually think and you guys can actually bring them back into Lightroom and Photoshop and actually make it come back to life. I do prefer to have my histogram leaning more towards my shadow side as long as I'm not peeking and let me show you guys why. In Lightroom, it's very easy to bring the information back up by using the shadows tool and dragging it to the right. Already, you guys can see that the detail is coming back in nicely and I do not drag this shadows tool all the way to the right because at least for me, it starts to look a little bit fake since it's only affecting the shadow side. So what I use instead is this contrast tool and I drag it to the left because it affects the overall image and not just the shadows. I do end up working my way down all these tools and then I go into Photoshop and finish my image up there. And let me show you guys my finished product. I will be making a video on how I enhance my colors, but for this video and tutorial purpose, the main point I'm trying to get across is that this edit would not have been possible if I did not shoot it correctly and retain enough information in camera. So I recently uploaded a before and after photo on Instagram that actually got a lot of good feedback. And I know it may sound dumb or whatever, but when I first started photography, I genuinely thought that the way that the photos looked in magazines were the way they looked straight out of the camera. I had no idea about Lightroom or Photoshop or even how crucial it was to make your ideas, colors, and photos come to life. 
So if you're just starting off or this is your hobby and you're wondering why your photos are not looking like the ones you see in magazines or even the ones on Instagram, this video is for you guys. I want you guys to see that my photos do not look crazy amazing straight out of the camera either, but I've learned how to retain enough information and use the histogram to my advantage so when I go into Lightroom and Photoshop, I have the information to work with and edit to my liking. I want you guys to focus more on the creative and less on the technicalities, which is why the histogram has to be one of my personal biggest game changers. Because when I knew that I actually had the information to work with back in post, I would be so much more loose throughout my shoot knowing that I had to focus more on the creative now and that's what I want for you guys and before I end today's video I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the early support and all the early subscribers it means a lot to me I did not expect that first video to do as well as it did so the fact that it's doing pretty good I just want to say thank you guys for everything and if you guys ever have any questions Always feel free to ask me whether that's down below on the comment section or on Instagram direct message. I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. And I hope to catch you guys on the next video. And thanks for watching once again. Alright, peace.